a super strong and simple to make gate with a difference. In this video, you're gonna learn how to make one. You're gonna learn the complete process start to finish, including how to make a super strong half lap joint. I'll show you how to brace a gate properly, because bracing is the all important part to give a gate its strength. And I'll show you how to clad it in something a little bit different as well. And the best bit is that any of you will be able to build a gate like this by the end of this video. So my gate needs to fit between the edge of the house and this brick wall here. So I'll fix a tantalized three by two to each side, one for the hinge, one for the latch. We'll fix that to each wall and that'll give me a frame to work with. Now once I've decided the height that I want the frame to be, I measure that, mark it on a piece of timber and cut the piece of timber to length. Now I'm gonna fix this in place. I've got my three by two clamped in place. I've made sure it's nice and plumb. The wall, not so much. Now I just drill some six millimetre holes along the length of my pieces of timber. I'm using these DeWalt anchors, they're great because you don't need a plug or a washer because they've got a flanged head on them and you can just drive them home. And once they're in, they're super strong. So we've got a bit of a frame now, we've got a bit of timber there that our gate can hinge on and a piece here that our gate can close against. So now I'll show you how I build a gate to fit this opening. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take a measurement of the opening so that I know what size to make the gate. So the opening is 940 millimeters, but I'm gonna make my gate 920 millimeters so that I've got a 10 mil gap either side of the gate. And I want my gate to be 100 mil shorter than the frame. I'm gonna be using these three by twos, they're tantalized. You don't need to go mad on timber size. It's more important how you brace and construct the gate than having massive timbers. I'll show you a little bit more about bracing very shortly. But what we'll do now is start cutting some of these timbers to length so that we can construct this gate. Now, because we're gonna be using half lap joints, we can cut our timbers to the actual size that we need. So that's 1800 for the height. Now we'll mark that for the two styles. The styles are the, the tall pieces of timber for the sides of the door. And we know the width of the door needs to be 920. And we'll need three bits of timber at 920. You'll see why shortly. Now we're gonna cut our bits of timber to length. If you've got a mitre saw, brilliant, use it. If not, use your circular saw or whatever you've got. So you can see I've got two at 1800 and three at 920. Now to join our pieces of timber together, we're gonna to use half lap joints. We use these because they're very strong and they're very easy to make. They're much better than if we were to just screw through the side of the timber, for example, because over time, you're gonna get movement and movement is gonna weaken the gate. So take a measurement of the width of the timber. Now in this case, it's 71 millimeters and I'll mark 71 millimeters on my piece of timber. And if we overlap the two pieces of timber, flush them on the end, we can double check that. And sure enough, that's the width of our timber and we need to remove some of this material. Now, if we look at the depth of our timber, it's 45 millimeters, half of 45 is 22.5. And we now know we need to remove 22.5 millimeters of the material where each piece of timber overlaps. Hence the name, the half lap joint. To start with, we'll do that for all the corners. Now there's a few ways of doing it. I'm gonna keep this simple and use the same tool. We'll just use the mitre saw to trench cut and remove that material for each piece of timber. I'm using the depth adjustment to set the saw to cut 22 millimeters. I've clamped another piece of timber here to pack this piece of timber out a bit so that my saw blade will fall right in the middle of that piece of timber. Now this saw's got a shadow line rather than a laser. Not sure if you can see it there. But now I can make a series of trench cuts across this piece of timber. The trick to this is to keep all of those cuts nice and close together. And then we can use a hammer to remove the material. You can see I hit the majority of that away with the hammer. And now I can use a nice sharp chisel to remove the rest of that material. Now, whilst there's many ways to do a half lap joint, this is by far the simplest. So repeat that for the rest of the timbers. So I'm just dummying the gate up now, just adjoining my style with my cross members here. But there's one more cross member, you'll notice that we cut that third one, which also needs a half lap joint. Now I like to use a half lap joint for my cross member because quite simply, it's stronger. And when I show you how we do the braces in a little while, you're gonna see why we need all the strength we can get on the cross member. We can now assemble the gate. Now I'll start with my cross member here in the middle. Should be 
a nice tight snug fit. To assemble your half lap joint you're going to want some exterior grade glue. This Gorilla Glue is interior and exterior so that's fine and you'll want some screws. For this size timber 40 millimeter is perfect. You want to put plenty of glue on the joint. I like to do that on both sides. Pop that joint together and then I'll just dummy up the other two. By dummying those up it just gives me a little bit of assurance that everything's somewhat square and I can start by fixing this joint in place. Don't go too near the edge because you don't want to split it and that will be an absolutely solid half lap joint. Repeat that for all four corners. And now I just take off any excess glue. So the frame's not quite finished yet. We've still got to do our brace, but we do need to check to see how square it is so that we can adjust it if necessary. And if I bring you around here, you can see it's already very good. So not much adjustment to do. So I think what we'll do now is get some braces cut. And the braces are often the bit that people get very confused with. So I want to show you how to properly cross brace a gate so that it doesn't sag on the floor or bind on the frame a few weeks down the line. Now the most important part of any gate structure is the bracing. It's not the sizes of the timber that give it its strength, but the braces and their position that stop it from sagging and dragging along the floor. So here is our gate and here are the hinges for the gate. You can see the center brace there. Now gravity dictates that our gate will sag along this edge here. So to correctly brace a gate, we need a brace here and a brace here. As this side of the gate tries to drop, the load will be transferred onto these pieces of timber here. If we did it the wrong way and put our braces here like this, as the latch side of the gate drops, the distance between this point and this point would become greater and this brace that we put in would do absolutely nothing because this gap would become bigger. So to keep it really simple, the lowest point of the brace should always be on the hinge side of the gate. I've put a centre line across my piece of timber that I'm using for my cross brace and then I'll position that into the corners where I can mark to make my cuts. Now if your gate is somewhat square it should be a 45 degree cut. Now you want this to be a nice snug fit. And then just fix the brace in place with some screws. So the cross braces are in. This is the hinge side. This is the latch side, top and bottom. Now we could put loads of weight on that top corner, but it would never sag because of the compression on our cross braces. Now, although this is tantalized timber, so it shouldn't rot, I just want to put a little bit of stain on the side of the gate that's going to be clad because of course, once it's clad, we can't stain it. There we go, a nice touch of light oak. We can finish staining this later, but for now, let's get it clad. Now with my cladding, I'm going against the grain. Get it? Against the grain. I'm not a massive fan of your usual feather edge boards. This is a feather edge board. Probably the most common board for fencing and gates that you see across the country. But I want something a little bit nicer. So I bought these deck boards and I'm going to create my cladding with these. So I measure and cut all of my deck boards 100 millimeters longer than my gate structure. Now I want the boards to fly past the frame of the gate, 50mm at the top and 50mm at the bottom. I've made a little mark for 50mm and all I'm going to do is line that up with the top of the gate. Now our cladden boards are cut to length, we can fit them to our gate. So I'm going to start on the latch side, get my first board nice and flush. If I don't do that, as I work across the boards, they're going to start to lean over and they won't be plumb when we stand the gate up. Now it really is as simple as just screwing those cladding boards to the frame of the gate and make sure that you also screw diagonally across the gate so that you're catching the brace behind. It's fully clad and it's really starting to come together. Now before I hang this thing, I'm going to stain both sides of it. It's a light oak colour and it looks really effective, but you can go with whatever colour you want. The most important thing though is that you get plenty of stain into any cut ends so that we retreat those pieces of timber. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, hit subscribe because you don't want to miss future videos and hit like because that helps this video reach and help more people like you on YouTube. Now I've lifted the gate in place and you can see that what I've done by creating that 50 mil gap at the top and 50 mil gap 
at the bottom, what we've got is a perfect finish at the top. So our post hair finishes in line with the cladding. You can see that on both sides. I've sat the gate on two off cuts of cladding. Just find yourself something to get that perfect gap at the top and at the bottom so that it looks spot on. And then all you want to do is clamp the gate in place. You can see I've popped a couple of 10 mil spacers at the top and at the bottom and that allows the gate to now sit in its final position so that we can fix the hinges. We've got two heavy duty T hinges. These are 500 mil ones. Don't buy cheap ones. Get a good quality heavy duty one. I'll link all this type of stuff in the description so you know where to find it. Now we'll fit one of these to the top of the gate and one of these at the bottom. 50 mil gold screws and that's it. And now we can take our clamps off and the gate shouldn't go anywhere. Right so we're going with the typical ring gate latch. Now this is a gate mate. Again it's a good high quality one. If you buy the cheap stuff one good gust of wind, gate slams, bends your latch. So make sure you get a good one. It's not sponsored they're just the ones I normally use. They come with instructions they're really easy to fit. I start by marking 40 millimeters with a square onto my gate frame and then marking the center point of the latch. And by doing this, we'll know exactly where we need to drill a hole through for our spindle. Now you need to pass either an auger bit or a spade bit through the gate. This one's 16 millimeters. Now pop the spindle into one side of the handle, pass it through the gate, and we can just screw the handle in place on both sides. Once you've centered the bar, screw that in its final position. You can then place the retainer over the bar, and we're going to screw that in place as well. And now find the level of your bar and then all we've got to do is screw the latch to the frame. You can see I've also fitted a gate spring and a cabin hook so that the gate doesn't keep slamming because that would be really annoying and with the wind coming down a side alley like this that often means that gates slam. So if your gate's on a side alley fit a cabin hook and a gate spring that just stops that wind from taking the gate. And you can see our gate opens and closes perfectly. Now as an optional step to finish this off you could fit a door stop for the gate to close into however I'm not going to do that because I like the finish how it is it's flush it looks perfect so I'm going to go with it like this and I'm not too worried about the little gap at the side of the gate there but if you want complete privacy go with a door stop and that completes our garden gate. It looks brilliant, it's strong, and any of you can make it at home. So give it a go. If you've enjoyed this video, hit one of these because you're bound to like them as well, and I'll see you guys in the next one.